One of the things that I find interesting about the city of Seattle is that even though it's not the big cosmopolitan that New York City is, we have a tendency to be connected to a lot of things, especially around issues, social causes, and environmental questions. What's wonderful about that is that we come into contact with things that don't necessarily affect our community, but give us an opportunity to explore them. In this next segment, I'd like to introduce you to Hanan. He's a model of what grassroots organizing looks like. Um, I'm a gay Iraq veteran, and through that experience, um, it definitely showed me um, reality and how the world works, and um, just blame not only discrimination, but um, just the injustice there is in the world. And I've always been, since I was young, I've always been a very outspoken person, very political. I, I founded a group here called Iraq Veterans Against the War, and I, I did that for two and a half years. And basically, I've always wanted to organize within the queer community. And my red line was the passage of Prop 8. I felt that there needed to be a group that actually tapped in and, and really embraced the community. But not only that, also the important element is involving allies, straight allies in the movement. So I helped uh, found uh, the Queer Ally Coalition, which is a democratic grassroots um, queer ally group. Important. I think. Uh, one thing that's been uh, denied to the queer community is n n not being taught our own history. And I think that we can learn a lot from the Gay Liberation Front, the Stonewall Riots, even before then, just going into the 1940s and 50s with the Mattachine Society and the daughter Daughters of Belitis, um, what happened during the crisis, the AIDS crisis, and how it really decimated um, a lot of activists, a lot of people, gay men, um, while the Reagan administration just sat by and did nothing. And if you look at um, the civil rights movement in the 60s, it was led by African Americans, but there were whites and Latinos and all stripes of people helping to build that movement against racism. I think the same way with the queer rights movement, in particular with, with uh, marriage equality, the, uh, the oppressed group, you know, gays are, queers are oppressed, they're going to be leading the movement. Um, but we can't just be in a bubble. We need to, to, to reach out um, to allies and to, uh, to labor, to the immigrant rights community, to the women's community. And that, that in and itself will, will develop uh, a stronger, more diverse, multiracial movement that can actually combat um, not only homophobia, um, winning gay marriage. We have more strength um, in numbers and, you know, Unity is very important in order to propel a movement forward. It's been an interesting uh, process to see how important community was about 30 years ago. Um, and not that it's unimportant now, but um, given the social dynamics at that time and you know, 30 years ago in gay years is 100 years ago in <laughs> straight years. I mean, times were very, very different then. And the need for the community felt very, very strong and almost visceral. That you really needed that because outside the community didn't maybe perceive there was all that much support. I think about a documentary that I saw not too long ago about Fire Island and its history and how particularly, you know, there was the beginnings, you know, it was fun, it was just the place to be, but, you know, at the height of the HIV AIDS crisis, it also turned into the beginning of a movement to bring awareness and to bring resources that the government was not providing to care for people and to celebrate people not as victims, but as individuals who deserve, if you will, dignity. Dignity. And that is something that I think we as a community do, uh, not often, but we can do it very well. And that I'm very proud of. Now, <clears throat> even though I'm not part of the younger generation, it seems as though um, younger folks now within the Seattle area are so much more incorporated into the broader society or the broader fabric of society. and. Um, my perception is that there's less of a urgent need for an LGBT community because their peers um, 
are so integrated into their lives and vice versa. A lot of us latched onto gay identity because it was because we spent so long pushing it down and being ashamed and because we were surrounded by people who didn't understand it, didn't want to get to know it, weren't interested. And so we then, you know, latched onto gay community and found other gay people like us or other queer people um, who said, you know what, you're okay. Like, and, um, and I just think that a lot of young people nowadays are finding that in pla places that we didn't find that. And what that means then is that notion of like, I have to surround myself with gay people to find comfort or to build community may be different nowadays. Um, and maybe if you can find that in your peer group and it doesn't have to be with other gay people, I mean, that, that's a big shift, you know. One of the things that I am absolutely grateful for uh, of my generation is just how open they are, you know, and that they can see past anything and see your light and see your love and they're like, however that comes into form, they don't care. They're like, so what's your point? <laughs> one, either we already knew or two, it doesn't change anything. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy. And then in 1998, I came out as just being uh, gay. Uh, that's when things kind of went south a little bit. You know, my parents found out, my dad and my stepmom, they found out and kicked me out of the house. Um, and it was kind of a rough ride for a long time, a really long time. But all in all, I mean, I had some really great people, like even in my church, really great people that just stood by me and told me that they loved me and that they were going to be my friends no matter what, that, you know, me being uh, like, like gay or whatever, it didn't it didn't change who I was as a person at all. You know, they kind of I don't real I had a lot of good people in my life at that time. I'm not gonna you know I don't know what to say about them. They made it really easy for me and really like gave me that loving space to just keep being myself and not have to worry about it and.